Well, what are MPs expecting to hear? And is Canada doing all it can to support Ukraine? Let's discuss that with members of Parliament. Rob Oliphant is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. And Heather McPherson is the NDP Foreign Affairs critic. She met with Ukrainian refugees in Poland just last week. Uh, no Conservative MP was available to join this discussion at this time, but we will get the party's perspective in a moment. Uh, Mr. Oliphant, let me start with you. Why is it important for the Canadian Parliament to hear from President Zelensky? I think that uh, Canadians, uh, including members of Parliament, have been absolutely um, uh, impressed and encouraged and enlightened by President Zelensky to date and uh, his courage and his intelligence, his ability to communicate. And I, my hope is that he will um, uh, deliver that strong message again to uh, not just to parliamentarians, but to all Canadians. And I think he will do it uh, as has been his trademark. I think that we're going to be inspired by him. Um, over the last uh, number of weeks, I think uh, Canada also you know, obviously has a, a large diaspora community. Um, and so there is a natural people to people connection. But it's more than that, that the, the Russian invasion of Ukraine has uh, uh, shocked and horrified all of us. Uh, we have seen images and has broken our hearts and compassion uh, okay. among Canadians has been inspired. And I think we're going to be continued to hear that. We'll also hear some demands from him as well, I'm sure. Well, I'm going to get to those in a second. Uh, but Heather McPherson, let me start off with your, your thoughts on why it's important to hear, uh, why this will be such a historic moment uh, to hear from President Zelensky. Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, you know, I think that that what Rob said is is correct. You know, we have we've all been been seized by this this um, the leadership that President Zelensky has shown, and the opportunity to be able to hear directly from him is is wonderful. I will just say too that you know I'm extremely proud of our Parliament. You know, members of all parties have come together and tried to find ways to get support to Ukraine. Um, you know, in the most effective way possible. I think we've all we've all worked together and worked very well together to try to move um, move that forward. And I think this is another opportunity for us to 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 listen to the president uh, and to think of ways that we can further support Ukraine going forward. Let's talk about that, Mr. Oliphant. Uh, you touched on it in terms of demands. Uh, he'll likely repeat his plea for a a, a no fly zone, and Canada will, as NATO has so far, reject that plea again. So, I, I wonder what the value of of the speech is if Canada can't give Ukraine what it really needs and wants, which is that no fly zone yeah. and additional, uh, uh, you know, uh, thrust from from NATO partners, including Canada. Well, I think we have been listening to uh, uh, President Zelensky and Ukraine all along. Uh, so there have been requests for lethal and non-lethal uh, weaponry. And we've had six tranches of, uh, of equipment that has been sent. They asked for financial assistance. We gave them uh, early on loans. We gave them early on financial assistance. They've asked for humanitarian aid. We continue to do that through the generosity of Canadians, as well as uh, the uh, matching with the, uh, the federal government. Uh, they've asked for sanctions, which are strong and profound, really the strongest sanctions we have ever seen. Um, and uh, we have been leveling those to right. to uh, to uh, suffocate Russia. Right, right. But, as, but as Russia steps up, for. you know, as Russia steps up those attacks, what Ukraine in in in, in, a, in a in a growing chorus is saying is, look, we, we need extra protection here. We can't keep fighting this on our own. It's just a matter of time. So what about that? Well, well, we want a negotiated peace settlement. We we want uh, the Russian troops to withdraw. We want an immediate ceasefire, and we want a diplomatic engagement. Canada has always stood for dip diplomatic engagement. Wars kill people, and we are seeing the deaths of civilians. We are seeing the targeting of civilians. We want a ceasefire, but we also know that to have an ability to negotiate, we have to strengthen Ukraine's position and we have to weaken Russia's position. Okay. And so that's what we've been doing, uh, has, weakening those positions and strengthening those positions so that they can come to the table. We're into okay. the let fifth let me, round. Let, let me, I'll come back now. to you. Let me, let me move to Heather McPherson sure. here. So mm -hmm. uh, Heather McPherson, what, what are your thoughts on whether uh, NATO needs to be uh, taking a more aggressive posture here uh, in defense of Ukraine? Well, I think as a Canadian parliament, as, as Canadians, we need to think of where we can be most effective. And I think some of those things that, that have been outlined are, are part of that. Uh, you know, we do need to provide those urgent um, humanitarian supplies, the urgent medical supplies, urgent um, defensive and protective items that President Zelensky has been asking for. Um, one of the things that I'm hoping that we get from this, uh, this speech from the president is that we are all seized with the long 
long-term impacts of this conflict. You know, one of my priorities is going to be making sure that those humanitarian, that humanitarian aid Canada has promised is long-term. It is going to take a very long time to rebuild Ukraine. It is going to take a very long time to, to help countries around Ukraine, like Poland, like Rom Romania, to, to recover from this. And I think that that's one of the things I want to be seized with is the long-term impacts of this. Um, and in the short term, are we doing what we can do best, what Canadians can do best at this moment to help people of, and, the, and, people and of Ukraine? We? And that includes immigration. That and, includes things like making sure people can flee violence. We're not doing it as well as we could be. We do need to do more on that front. We had a broken immigration system before this crisis that needs hmm. to be fixed. Um, and, and, you know, there is lots more we can do. The sanctions, it's great to see them. They were a little slow in coming, but I, but I agree okay. with Rob that they're very fulsome right now. Okay, so I mean, there's a, do do you sense, Mr. Oliphant, a, a growing sense of urgency here? I mean, Heather McPherson's talked about the longer term, and that's clearly important, and Canada's going to have to be implicated in that. But uh, we now see Russia stepping up its attacks in western Ukraine, right at the Polish border, uh, the border, of course, of a NATO member. Uh, Russia says NATO supply lines into Ukraine are now fair game. At what point do NATO countries, including Canada, have to get more involved? Well, we've we've indicated that uh, we have reports and evidence that there is uh, there are war crimes being committed. So we've gone to the International Criminal Court. Uh, we are supporting uh, Ukraine at the International Court of Justice. Uh, we are a, a country that stands by the international rules based order and the rule of law. And we need to do that. We need to do it effectively. Um, and we need short term, medium term and long term solutions. I totally agree with Heather um, uh, that we're going to be in this for the long time on a people to people basis, as well as an infrastructure basis, as well as the continuing fragile but but growing democracy in Ukraine. That's what we're going to be uh, supporting. We've been there with military training. We've been there with um, uh, democracy uh, actions, including election monitoring. That's the kind of thing that we're going to be doing. But we're not we're not out of the woods yet. And what I think President Zelensky will see today is a parliament united. There can be no cracks on this. Right because we need to be, be together. And I think he will see that. And so that Russia will never be able to say that there's any division on this. We are 100% supportive of Ukraine. We're bringing our international allies, our, our, our bilateral friends, we're bringing them to the fore. And Canada's exercising leadership. Not perfectly. I will agree. We are an imperfect country. But my goodness, I have seen the generosity of Canadians and the willingness of a government to be mobilized. And I hope President Zelensky, not only will he inspire us, but I hope we inspire him okay. to, to uh, hang in there and keep going. Heather McPherson, you talked about uh, things we could be doing better. You were, you've sort of observed uh, the crisis firsthand uh, in, your, in your time in Poland. Um, mm -hmm. What did you see that tells you that, you know, uh, uh, how you believe Canada needs to respond and what we're doing now that we should be doing better? Well, one of the things that I that I saw, I mean, first of all, I have to say it was it was utterly heartbreaking to be um, in those train stations and seeing these newly arrived refugees that, you know, one week earlier, two weeks earlier, were, were going to school, were living their lives. You know, to see these children in these situations was, of course, extremely heartbreaking. But one of the things I want to note is that, you know, Poland to date has taken in over a million refugees. Poland doesn't have the capacity to do that. So we need to do what we can, for example, to support Poland, to make sure that they're able to help these refugees uh, go to school, um, access medical care, you know, some of those things, making sure that the the, the number of, of folks that can come from Poland and the surrounding countries to Canada, I think, is, is a vital piece that we can do. There's work that we need to do on disarmament. You know, frankly, I have been calling on the government to act stronger on disarmament so we wouldn't be in a situation where we have nuclear weapons being used as a tool to blackmail. You know, I agree with Rob that the ICC and the ICJ are really important. But, but let's look at some, some other pieces that need to be reformed. The United Nations Security Council needs to be reformed. Russia should not be able to chair and veto so peacekeepers cannot go right. into Ukraine right now. Okay. The, there, is, there is a lot of work that needs to be done. And, and I agree with Rob that I certainly hope that President Zelensky uh, sees the, the Parliament of Canada as an ally going forward in this. All right. Uh, listen, thank you both for your time. Uh, I do appreciate it. And we'll talk again. Thank good you. To get, good to get your views. Take care. Thank you so Bye. much. Mr. Halan, why do you believe this address from President Zelensky to the Canadian Parliament is so important? Uh, well, first and foremost, thank you so much for having me. And uh, let me just express our complete admiration 
for the nation of Ukraine, who has set an example that they've gone out and with their strength and defiance, they're not just standing up for Ukraine, but they're really they're defending all of Europe. And this is such a, a, a historic moment. This is such a, a big moment that we're going to see in Parliament take place because it just shows that we are united with the people of Ukraine. We are there for the Ukrainians and we will continue to be there together. That's why it's so important. And I think this is a really great step that we have President Zelensky, um, you know, address the House of Commons. This is a big deal. Do you, do you believe Canada is doing all it can uh, and all it needs to do to support Ukraine? That's a really good question. Look, we, in times like this, we need to take a Team Canada approach. Um, we, we also do feel that we need to strengthen our, our own defences at the same time, although that we are, uh, we are uh, supportive of the measures that have been taken by the Canadian government so far. Uh, we also have been pushing for a visa-free travel, and, you know, that's something I pushed. We still want that to, to uh, be materialised because, as you know, there are many... Canadians of Ukrainian heritage that ha- are asking for this still. And, uh, you know, we are there to support in any other way that we can. There's always more that we can do. Uh, uh, President Zelensky has called for a NATO no-fly zone over Ukraine. I expect he'll call for that again and reinforce that message. Uh, NATO, and w- which Canada is a partner, of course, continues to reject that request. What's your party's position on a, a NATO no-fly zone for Ukraine? Uh, look, we we are still in talks about what what that looks like, like what 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 we can do to work with the Canadian government to in order for that to take place. Uh, obviously, there are bigger concerns around those kind of issues that you know we should be discussing within Parliament to make sure that we're taking a Team Canada approach and supporting Ukrainians in any way that uh, they would like to do. But again, this is something I we feel that we should be sitting together as all parties whether there's a committee or whether there's in the House of Commons to discuss these type of issues. Okay, but, but on, on, on the surface of it, do uh, uh, you, you support NATO's position, Canada's position right now that, that, that a no-fly zone might encourage a wider war and, and make things worse rather than better? Uh, it is a possibility, and those are some of the things like that exact point that you brought up. I, I believe that this is something that we should all be sitting together as parliamentarians to discuss to support not only as much as we can to the people of Ukraine, but making sure that we are making the best decisions that we can to not escalate things further. Um, Again, this is something we keep pushing that we should be taking a Team Canada approach on and supporting the best way that we can. Let's finish on this. The uh, President Zelensky will have a message for Canadians and and parliamentarians. What's your message for him? Uh, First and foremost, thank you. Thank you for the strength and the courage that you have shown like I said before, not just for the people of Ukraine, but for all of Europe, that the the strength and defiance that we're seeing is very admirable. Canada is an ally. Canada will continue to be there for you. We are watching. The world is not just watching. We are all in support, and we will be there for you. All right. uh, Just Raj Singh Halan. Thanks so much for your time tonight, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you very much.